I do have to ask though, mm-hmm. what the hell is going on with this band name? A E R O. What do you think Smith. these guys think that means? I have no idea. Aero, aerodynamic, aeroplane. I get it. Smith would be a worker right. of okay, that's some okay. material. So like blacksmith of the air. They're smithers of aerodynamics. They're smithing the air waves. Out of your speakers. Man, I bet they thought that was real smart, huh? One of the weirdest names. Did you know that Steven Tyler got mad the first time he saw Spinal Tap because he thought the whole movie was making fun of Aerosmith? It's not surprising to me. That totally makes sense. Unpack that for a minute. Like, <laughs> think about what that means. Yeah. When you say something really fucked up and someone thinks you're talking about them and you're like, no, I was that what? You thought that was about yeah. you? Yeah, that's the best. Why do you think that about yourself? <laughs> yeah, nobody else is saying that, but you feel that way. That means maybe you feel like there's truth to it. It's nuts, man. Because nobody was. What's funny is until you just said that just now, I've never even... That never crossed my mind, not even a little bit. I never would have thought to link the two. No. Because Spinal Tap is a legitimately a good band. You're not sitting there watching Spinal Tap going, what else does this remind me of? You're just being entertained. Also, if you were to say, what band does this remind you of? Aerosmith wouldn't even be in the top. No, not at all. 100 bands that I would list off. The closest you could get would be the song Back in the Saddle, maybe, maybe. That's a far, that's a a reach. reach. Spinal Tap's songwriting is better. The musicianship is better. The production is even better. The showmanship is better. Lyrically more interesting and entertaining, which is why when you're watching Spinal Tap, you're not sitting there thinking, who does this remind me of? As opposed to when you're sitting there watching Aerosmith, all you can do is sit there and go, what does this remind me of? Because it's 50 different things. I think we're going to have to go back to Steven Tyler's face for a minute. I mean, that's like half of Aerosmith. No, I think he's like 90% of Aerosmith. His face is terrifying to me, and it has been since I was a child. This isn't normally something that we talk about. (laughs) Yeah. But this is a part of my childhood that we're getting into right now. So sucks for his fucking face. But he's been scary to me my whole life. If anyone listening to this has access to a small child, please show them the video for Don't Want to Miss a Thing. Let me know if they get scared. Intensely unique looking man. He looks like the evil wizard from some cartoon movie set in an enchanted forest. Or honestly, the evil witch in a cartoon movie set in an enchanted forest. He kind of is the physical embodiment of that too, though. I guess that makes sense. You know what I mean? Right? He's scary looking, I think. Dude can eat a whole entire hamburger in one bite, I guarantee it. (laughs) (laughs) If this guy had his mouth open when you were talking to him, do you think there'd be an echo? Is that reverb? Steve's got his mouth open. (laughs) I think Steven Tyler lives in Nashville now. He's around a lot. People I definitely know have run into him. I don't really give a shit, though, because one time I saw Steven Tyler steal a joke from Dolly Parton. So if you're a local, you pretty much have to pick sides right now. (laughs) Steven Tyler went on that Craig Ferguson guy's late night talk show, which is always terrible, and tried to make a joke about how much money it costs to look so cheap, which is a Dolly Parton joke from 50 years ago. So fuck this guy, Team Dolly. God, him. Imagine how great it would be if we ran into him somewhere, sometime. I would just want to be like, seriously, can you fit my entire head in your mouth? <laughs> you know, like uh, the thing from uh, Beetlejuice. One of the creatures in Beetlejuice gets his like mouth oh, all Oh, he huge. pulls on his face and sticks his eyes in his mouth yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's Steven Tyler's mouth. I'm pretty sure like they built that puppet off of his face. If you could get him to pay attention long enough to learn lines of dialogue and try to act, it's possible he'd make a good villain in a movie. He would make a great villain. The guy that just eats everyone. Also, it's not genetically possible for him to still have as much hair as he does now, right? I've got to assume something going something on Something else there. is going on Yeah, there. yeah. And the way that this motherfucker dresses, we could get derailed here hard. We could spend 20 minutes on this possibly, and I really don't want to. But the way that this guy dresses... His entire existence is like a fashion faux pas. ...is next level. So you know how there's that meme, what's your crazy aunt doing, and they use Steven Tyler? Yeah. Y'all fucking wish (laughs) your aunts were this off the rails. (laughs) You could never be related to someone this crazy. Yeah. And if you were, I promise you wouldn't think it was funny. This guy dresses like he was a belly dancer in a past life who got murdered and buried inside of a Persian rug. And he's so traumatized by that that every time he gets dressed, he tries to unlock the combination that's going to make him be able to let go. Does he like make his own clothes? No way. 
small children in other countries make his clothes. I just don't even know where you, where do you find, I mean, he just shops in the woman's aisle, right? That's the thing. There's no dude shirts that look like that Dude, on he shops in the home decor section. <laughs> he does not shop in the women's clothing section. He is wearing <laughs> curtains. Curtain. <laughs> yeah. He is. Cut into a shirt. Okay, real quick. He question. might make his own jewelry. Do you think he's skinned his couch and turned it into like a pair of pants? He probably has a couch made out of pairs of pants. You only ever see no shirt on, a vest on, or some sort of flowing shawl, silk looking thing. Here's something I know for a fact. The ratio of accessory to main article of clothing on this guy oh, yeah. is way out of whack. Like if this were his Omega 3s, he'd be dead by now. Yeah. Definitely takes an hour to go to bed because he's got to get, Oh, I think he just sleeps with all that shit on. This guy's a human rattle, man. Wow, you think he just sleeps with all that yeah, on? Yeah, because maybe he sleepwalks and he's pushing 95 now or some shit. So if he gets up in the middle of the night, then everyone else living there can he... Oh, Steven's going to the bathroom again. Every time he'd rolled over, it would sound like a truck driving through a cymbal shop. All right, you know how celebrities sometimes try to go to the store or a gas station in some sweatpants and a ball cap and sunglasses thinking maybe they won't get recognized, have to deal with 20 people who are now so nervous to talk to this person that they forgot how to talk. They just blather endlessly in their faces. Celebrities will try to avoid that by dressing down. Yeah. But then there's always some piece of shit who makes their living selling low quality photos of people who very much don't want to have their picture taken especially this specific picture at this specific moment. And there are those pieces of shit who make a living by taking those pictures and selling them to magazines. And everyone goes, look, Britney Spears had to go to a gas station. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And it's all anyone can talk about for a day because we're human chimpanzees. Look at you wore a crop top shirt. What a freak. I don't think Steven Tyler has ever done the first thing. You don't think he's ever gone to a grocery no. store? No, I don't think he has ever dressed down in an attempt to not be recognized. Okay, so you're saying that every day. Every day. Regardless. Does not even go check his mail without being dressed. This guy dresses like he's trying to make people who don't recognize him still want to take a picture of him with their phones. Whoa, look at this weirdo who just walked into this store. I don't know what's about to happen. I better get a picture of this guy in case some real wild shit goes down. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen this here. This is either Steven Tyler or a fucking raging homeless person. I don't know one or the other. I'm saying even people who have never heard of Steven Tyler or Aerosmith in their lives, they see this guy walk in, someone's going to take a picture. Because you never fucking know. I don't know. He went crazy and he tried to bite the cashier's ear off. Maybe he's on bath salts. Look at how he's dressed. God, that would be so awesome videotape him going into places where people don't know who he is and then asking them what their thoughts are on that guy <laughs> what would you think if you didn't know who he was what would be the first thought in your head this guy thinks he's a genie fucking look at yeah, him yeah 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 genie yeah yeah he's over here telling the kids section to rub his lamp dude thinks he's fucking aladdin there's no off for Steven Tyler, is, is what you're saying? Well, I also don't think I've ever seen a blurry paparazzi photo of this guy. Every picture I've ever seen of him is crystal clear, even when he's doing this Aaron shit. So not only does he try to dress like a circus clown who hunts cheetahs on the side, he also, I think, he probably has his publicist make this phone call to let him know to bring their good camera, get at this location, Steven Tyler will be walking down the sidewalk. You can hear him coming from a mile away. You're going to hear him coming. Oh, it's like, you know, the reindeer's coming at Christmas time. It is. Time. Hear the jingle jangle? That's Santa. No, it's not. It's Steven Tyler. Here comes Aerosmith. Here <laughs> comes Aerosmith. Right down Aerosmith Lane. It's actually a, a great skit that should happen. <laughs> Dasher and Dancer. No, it's Steven Tyler on my roof. What the fuck is going on right now? There should be some way for narcissists to compete with each other to see who's more narcissistic. I bet Steven Tyler would excel. He would be at the peak. I don't think there is a single Steven Tyler interview where he doesn't sing some Aerosmith song. Like the lyrics are not only going to blow the mind of the person interviewing him, but they also blow his own mind <laughs> that he was able to write it, you know? Seriously, this is fucking blowing my mind right now. Can you believe I did this, man? <laughs> like, it's so amazing that humans like myself and Joe Perry were able to capture this magic on the paper. He's like if Keanu Reeves was the person everyone thought Keanu Reeves was. You know, everyone just thought Keanu Reeves was legit a dumb dude guy. Yeah. Steven Tyler. Is that guy. Yes. Steven Tyler talks about Aerosmith songs like Tool fans talk about Tool songs. This is the most genius shit anyone ever did in a recording studio. This guy has his head so far up his own ass. Did you see any of his thing on Joe Rogan? Uh, I did not. I do know what you're talking about. It made so many people that I know 
laugh so hard. I got sent a link to watch it by many people, so I watched some of it. I'm really starting to love it when anyone we're talking about has been on the Joe Rogan podcast. Because <laughs> if you get anyone in probably any band to talk for three hours, they're going to probably say some dumb shit. But if you get someone from Aerosmith to talk for three hours, we're talking dumbest shit you ever heard in your life, dumb. Yeah. The thing I saw was a super cut of all the times that Steven just talked for like six or seven uh. or eight minutes straight. You're on an interview show. How do you talk for six minutes straight without stopping or eight minutes straight? I don't think... I could not talk about anything unless someone specifically asked me a very specific question, which took me eight minutes to do the whole thing. I don't think I could talk for eight straight minutes. It's rambling. He sidetracks himself tangents after tangents. He's one of those people, you know how some people get drunk? You can tell when they're talking to you that they don't remember what they started to say when they opened their mouth and started talking. So you have to watch them continue to form words and try to string something together. And three tangents later, you're like, trying to weave him back to the where this all started or just any way to get out of the conversation i can't imagine what it would be like if it was your job to sit there and also they do this live too yeah so three you can't, hours yeah that would be a bummer if you're able to watch some of that you can hear some ridiculous things come out of steven tyler's mouth it seems to me like he thinks that human beings happened when aliens came here and fucked monkeys that's awesome that's great so, Joe, this is right up Joe's alley. Well, I mean, aliens are real. We've been over this. Tom DeLonge went on Joe Rogan's podcast. Joe Rogan made fun of Tom DeLonge. And then a week later, the Navy essentially said that Tom DeLonge was, was correct. Correct. Yeah. So, aliens are real. But, quote, when I go out at night in Maui and walk around, I'm dying to see a UFO. So are you. Because the second I see one, that will make clear shit like, you know, the song I wrote called Back When Kane Was Able. Anyways, it was about a mothership and shit way before I knew anything about UFOs, end quote. I feel like that's one of those moments when he's talking that Joe like turns into like a rocket ship himself and like launches off through the roof because he's so baffled by what he's saying. If this, he was sitting in front of me saying this shit, in my head, I would be just like, curling up into a ball and rolling out of the room. I gotta go, dude. I don't know how to handle it when someone's rambling nonsense at you like that. I was able to sit down and look at this and take it apart and put it back together and kind of figure out the point he was trying to make. But when you're just listening to him talk real time and you're supposed to be engaging in this conversation with yeah. this person, it's not even possible. But also, unless it's specifically about him asking like, oh, to bringing it back to a song that you wrote randomly. Exactly. He starts talking really about aliens. Well, right. So the point seems to be that he thinks he's so good at writing songs that not even he understands what he's saying in those songs because he's some sort of alien prophet. Yeah. Basically, Steven Tyler's pretty sure he's a genius, but he's not smart enough to be sure. Right. But it's he, his position, but I think. I feel like by saying that kind of stuff, he's like fishing for someone right. to say that he is. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like if I constantly spring it back to something maybe I did, like, or a song that I wrote, eventually someone's going to say, damn, dude, you did do that. You're a genius. The real thing about this guy that everyone has to understand, and I don't think we've mentioned it yet, but Steven Tyler is a drummer. A great drummer at that. A great drummer at that. <laughs> a great drummer. <laughs> All right. So if anyone is somehow not aware in the music industry, every branch of the music industry that deals with musicians on a daily basis, there are more drummer jokes than any other instrument. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. If you want to know what that reason is, look at Aerosmith, because this is what happens when you let the drummer be the lead singer all of a sudden. So if you've ever thought about doing that, don't. You're the Foo Fighters also. Exactly. These are drummers. Yeah. Dave Grohl, Steven Tyler, yeah. John Bonham. Phil Collins. One thing is not like the others here until you go listen to that episode and find out how much of a psycho that guy is. <laughs> And not all drummers are bad, obviously. Not all drummers are terrible people. The people who are drummers and narcissists, get yeah. the fuck out of here. No. They're lead singers. Kick that fucker out of the band. Get the drummer from Almost Famous who doesn't talk. That's who you want. The thing is, is a lot of bands could just have drum machines and nobody would even know. Godflesh. Shit, half the time. Godflesh. Yeah, there's a lot of times I think people don't realize that they're probably listening to a drum machine in the recording anyways. Echo and the Bunnymen. Just saying. <laughs> it, a lot of that shit... Basically, there's not a drummer. It's just triggers. The other thing about Steven Tyler being a drummer is that's why his lyrics are nonsense. He's using his mouth as a percussion instrument. 
Once you hear Aerosmith songs this way, it's never going back. Steven Tyler's playing drums with his mouth. That's Aerosmith for the rest of your life. He's like a scat man kind of guy. It is. Get a little dude, let a scat a guy, guy. Then there are the parts of the song where he wails. So it's drumming, 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 then wail. That's it. That's all this guy does. Just screams in his high pitched voice. What is that? It, he doesn't really sing falsetto. No, he's just screaming. He's really? <laughs> <laughs> he's just, just screaming. He's just screaming. <laughs> it's. He sings so high. No, 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 he's screaming. He's got a little button that he pushes, it squeezes his balls. But also, it's not like any of the other guys in Aerosmith were gonna be a good front person. Yeah. Joe Perry's not gonna be the front person for this band. You can go look up footage of the Joe Perry Project or read anything about any of the albums they made. Joe Perry arguably shouldn't be in any band. He's not that great of a guitar That's player. That's really nice of you to say. <laughs> he's not a guitar player at all. It's not I don't great. think there's a person on earth that goes, Joe Perry is my favorite guitar player. It is weird, though, because American audiences, at least, seem to want the main creative force of a band to be two main people. They like solo artists, and then they like bands where it's max two people, and then the rest of the band needs to be a bunch of nobodies. Yeah, I think because it's just people are dumb, and it's easy to remember two people in a band. So do you think we should get some losers to hang out here while we record this show or yeah. something? Yeah, I think we should have uh, at least two or three people in here with us at all times. So everyone knows not named Joe Perry or Steven Tyler has a collective nickname in this band that I think is just great. It's the least interesting three, sometimes the less important three. Some sources say the guys in the band started calling themselves that. I seriously doubt this, but got to give them props for at least owning it. Yeah. Once they found out people were calling them that. They are the most replaceable three because they could be anybody. They've Well, Joe Perry's been replaced in this band for a while. Yeah. So these guys are fucked. That's what's wild. I, I feel like there is a, uh, a team Steve or a team Joe thing where people are like, oh, Steven is the reason for all of Aerosmith. And some people are like, no, Joe is all the reason for Aerosmith. Whoever is team least interesting three has way too much time on their hands. Yeah. If that's what you're spending your time, like these guys just get shit on all the time. Well, fuck them. That's what they get paid for. I didn't even know their names until I read this. <laughs> I don't know who they are. So the most famous example of how much these other three guys are barely made to feel like members of the band is that they were not even flown in for the run dmc walk this way recording session or music video that's the best thing in the whole world they aren't on the song but then when they decided to make a music video that became one of the most famous music videos in history they were like we're just gonna hire some extras probably i've do you think that they care or do you think they just make so oh, much i cannot imagine them not caring man i don't know Part of me is like, I agree. How do you not care? Then the other part of me is like, but they still just make so much fucking money and they get to laugh at these two assholes fighting over the spotlight and being shitty to each other. Well, Steven Tyler's basically a bully. He's an asshole to everyone in this band. Like he constantly tells the drummer that the drummer sucks. He's like, you fucking <laughs> suck. I don't know why you would have played that the way that you played that. After Joe Perry quit the band the first time, this whole thing becomes a soap opera. It's been a soap opera ever since then. That's why all these guys have written in books. People act like the albums Draw the Line Through Done With Mirrors is some transitional period for Aerosmith. Like this is when they started to suck. But these albums just sound like Aerosmith albums to me. I think they say it starts at Draw the Line because the production sounds so different and it does sound very terrible, but that's because the band were so far gone on drugs that the producer just stopped caring. He stopped trying, but the material is identical to everything that Aerosmith was doing before. Right. If you made these songs sound like an Aerosmith album sounds, it would just sound like all Aerosmith albums. So it's not like the band started to suck. They were just insufferable, and this guy stopped doing his job. Maybe because they put out, you know, four albums in four years before. Well, they're definitely burning the candle at both ends and one up their butt. The <laughs> next album, Aerosmith's doing more drugs than ever. They get a new producer and make what I'm pretty sure is actually Joe Perry and Steven Tyler's favorite Aerosmith album. They have said right in the nuts, I mean, Night in the Ruts is their favorite Aerosmith album, <laughs> which is really confusing to me because everyone's excuse for why Draw the Line is so supposedly bad is everyone was on so many drugs, but the band's favorite album is the one they made on more of those drugs. It's interesting the different ways people think certain drugs sound. Fleetwood Mac and Steely Dan are two of the big cocaine Coke bands, bands for 
really boring people. Aerosmith is the cocaine band for everyone who didn't graduate high school. How can you afford cocaine? This uh, this album is terrible. It is not good. I mean, I'm not saying it's good. Ooh, they do cover the Yardbirds, though. That's the thing is they're doing a bunch of covers. Joe Perry quits the band while they're making the album. Yep. We always say it, but I do think these guys figured out that if they just became a shit show, they could always get press. They're still doing it now. This is lasted until today. I was going to say, this is maybe when it starts clicking and it never unclicks. Five years ago, Steven Tyler gave some interview overseas and they asked him what he was going to do next. And he said something like, whatever it is, I'm going to work on Steven Tyler, the brand Steven Tyler. Gets on an airplane and then when he lands... Joe Perry has said it to the media, I don't know, I guess Steven just quit the band. It's like he was looking for any possible way to read it, like Steven Tyler just quit his band, like, yes, we are going to get a new singer. This is going to get more fun. Joe Perry announces they're auditioning for a new singer. They got a ton of press. Within 24 hours, Steven Tyler appears on stage at a Joe Perry concert. I'm not leaving Aerosmith. And says something like, Joe Perry, you are a man of many colors, but I, motherfucker, am the rainbow. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry if that's not an exact quote, but it's almost an exact quote. Pretty close. What kind of a psycho says that into a microphone? I'm the rainbow? Okay, man. <laughs> and then he's back in the band. He makes a country album. They all talk shit on that. This is all very recent. The most recent thing is their drummer hurt himself and took some time off while they had a replacement. And now he wants to come back. And they said he had to record an audition tape to come back to the band. Prove that you're good enough, old fart. Guy that has literally been in the band since day one. Why wouldn't you just have him come play a rehearsal? So I think he did record it. And then he sent it a tape of this rehearsal, I think, is what happened. It's what mm. made it seem like it happened. And the band listened to it and was like, that's not good enough. We're going to keep the replacement. Yeah, there's something actually, I think, even since we've been here. So now he's suing the band yeah. for not letting him be in the band. Aerosmith drummer Joey Kramer Kramer sues band for keeping him from performing at the Grammys. The dude has been in the man. He's a founding member of the band. That is a straight nut shot, dude. So when we say this band became a soap opera after Joe Perry quit that first time, this is the level. It has not changed. This is what we're talking about yes, here. Same band. Aerosmith made an album without Joe Perry. It's not worth talking about. But you skipped over pro- one of the more important songs. Which is? Jailbait, which happens to be a song written only by... Steven Tyler. That's not a surprise. I don't know. I just thought that was an interesting song. And interesting that only he was the one writing it. Is that weird? I don't know. Is that weird? I don't know. You tell me. Five years later, Joe comes back along with Brad Whitford, who we've already discussed. No one knows, but he also happened to quit the band in this time period. The 80s are upon us. They make a comeback album called Done With Mirrors. They're still on drugs, by the way, and it tanks. Even Joe Perry doesn't like Done With Mirrors. So anyway, this band was just about done when Run DMC made one of the biggest mistakes in the history of the music business and listened to Rick Rubin. Anyone interested in how Walk This Way came to be recorded by Run DMC, go get a book by Jeff Edgers. It's called Walk This Way. It's the whole story of this song, how and why Run DMC re-recorded it with Steven Tyler and Joe Perry. Even if it is a stupid song, it is an interesting story. It seems like almost everyone involved in creating this song thinks it wasn't very good. So sorry if your feelings are hurt right now. (laughs) I think there are a lot of people who think this song happened as the result of some sort of mutual respect between Aerosmith and Run DMC. That would definitely be the story that people believe. That is not what happened at all. Run DMC did not know who Aerosmith was or even the name of this song. All they knew was this drum part, all the DJs looped for them to rap over, and it was track four on Toys in the Attic. I think that's how they even called for it. Like, yo, track four, Toys in the Attic. Right. They didn't even know that the album was by a band. (laughs) That's Toys in the Attic. Give me those drums. Right. And in fact, they've even said that they hated the song when they finally heard the rest of the song. I mean, yeah, Walk This Way came out in 1975, yeah. but nobody gave a Originally, shit. Originally, The yeah. Toys in the Attic. Nobody really gives a shit about it until... Rick Rubin made them learn the lyrics, which they did not know, and when they read the lyrics, called it something like hillbilly gibberish or hillbilly poetry. <laughs> and it is terrible. I can't imagine these guys having to do this. Yeah, it's probably too early. There probably wasn't... Uh, 
a behind the scenes for making this video or making it. There is some footage is of there? them in the studio doing the recording session. Everyone who was there talks about how weird it was. So I think this collaboration happened because one of the most widely read music critics in the world practically telegraphed that if someone put Walk This Way into a rap song, he'd love it. We've talked about this before. The Who wrote Pinball Wizard because they knew this one music critic loved pinball. We'll make this about pinball and that guy's gonna give it a great review. Sure. Chuck Eddy reviewed Done With Mirrors in The Village Voice and ridiculously said that Walk This Way was quote, sort of rap music before rap music existed end quote. Hell of a quote. Just in case anyone was looking for a way to give credit to white people for rap today. That's quite the thing to say. This guy should have been fired on the spot. <laughs> Chuck Eddy even talks in one of his books about how his editor at The Village Voice thought Chuck was just saying some stupid shit to mess with people. He was trolling people. The editor was like, ha, that'll get him, and published this. <laughs> That's the thing, too, is somebody else had to okay it and actually take it to print. But if you thought he was just trolling people, I guess that would make sense. So this same review also talks about how great of an idea it would be for hip hop DJs to mix out of Walk This Way into some Beastie Boys or whatever they want. Rick Rubin literally reads this review and offers to pay Joe and Steven to come record with Run DMC. Their comeback album just flopped. They do a ton of drugs. Yeah. They take the money. Yeah. That is how this song happened. Honestly, the song isn't even a big deal. When the record comes out, it's just not that big of a deal. Run DMC didn't like it. Aerosmith only did it for the money. Rap Rock, by the way, just in case you're confused here, was already happening and Rick Rubin had a whole lot of nothing to do with it, okay? Even Run DMC already had rap rock songs. Mm -hmm. They had Rock Box, a rap song with the word rock in the title. King of Rock was on the charts for over a year before the Walk This Way collaboration happened. It doesn't get any more rap rock than Run DMC doing King of Rock. Realize the sack it takes for a rapper to proclaim himself the king of an entirely separate genre of music? People were paying attention. This happened a year before Walk This Way. The big deal here was the Walk This Way music video. Because this is the thing that got MTV to finally yes, play so it rap. Was, exactly. This is what pushes the door open. It allows them to do new things over at MTV. All we're talking about here is your aunt finding out that rap is happening. Everyone else already knew, okay? This is just an excuse for mainstream corporate as fuck platforms to finally acknowledge a thing that was already happening. Yeah. Rap had already been happening and they hadn't played shit of it. Rap rock is now happening. They're about to be way behind the curve on that too they have to start playing something finally Aerosmith a band they understand a <laughs> band these old white dudes fucking understand is involved and now they know what to do I don't know who this run DMC is but I sure know some Aerosmith and MTV is only like five years old at this time too so anytime they got a new video that they could play they would try it and if it got a response they would keep playing it they wore this fucker out man oh my god it was this song was such a disease Walk this way it still is played so much any sort of retrospective show on mtv is gonna have a huge piece of it on this video it is in every single possible history of mtv or music videos it will always be there because it always does get lunged to the front of the line as being like some sort of groundbreaking thing that no one had ever done or heard or seen before. It was, yeah, the first rap video that MTV played, yeah. but that's not great. It's a finally situation, not a, whoa, whoa. This isn't whoa. This is like when Hillary Clinton decided to not be against gay marriage anymore. Right. That's what this is. <laughs> Aerosmith kicked open the door for all these hip hop artists that were already doing their hip hop thing for a decade before. Suddenly Aerosmith's back. Their label hires the producer who just did Bon Jovi Slippery When Wet. Mm -hmm. And they bring in a bunch of song doctors to help these guys. Let's smooth it out, boys. Let's smooth it out. Write some hits. And Aerosmith Defenders, the old stuff was good Defenders, they make a huge deal out of this Song Doctor situation as if when Aerosmith started writing with Desmond Child and they stopped writing all their songs themselves, this is the reason Aerosmith started to suck. 
Mm. No, man, mm. this is not a cause. <laughs> they're bringing these people who know what they're doing in to try to save this situation. What, after all the songs that Aerosmith had put out? Aerosmith is one of the best examples of how stupid it is for they write their own songs to be used as any gauge of merit when it comes to art. People make fun of how pop singers need teams of people to write the dumbest songs ever. Then they overcorrect and overly praise some of the dumbest songs ever just because they were written by a band who's singing it themselves. <laughs> it was only written by two dudes. Yeah, but it's a shitty song. Some old dumbass is going to respond to this episode pointing out how many hit songs Aerosmith wrote for themselves. Wow, man. Did they write Walk This Way all by themselves? <laughs> Have you read the lyrics to that song? It sounds like Jay and Silent Bob trying to explain how many things you can imagine while jacking off. And half <laughs> of those things are illegal. They wrote it themselves, dude. You just don't get it. You're like too young to understand. That's what it is. Something about the logic here, though, of praising these bands who sell a lot of records by writing their own songs, but then shitting on pro songwriters who sell a lot of records no matter who sings their songs. It seems like the second thing's more impressive than the first thing to me. If someone writes a song where 50 bands can sing it and it is great with all of them, that's more impressive to me than a band who writes a song to their strong suits. Also, Aerosmith always recorded covers. So if we care so much about who wrote these songs, why is that okay? If you want to defend the old Aerosmith stuff because they were writing it all, well, they weren't writing it all. One of their big guitar songs is that cover, A Train Kept a Roll In, which they did not write and they cannot play. It's not even them playing the lead guitar on the studio version of the song. The producer brought in other guitar players. That's what you know you're bad. Same thing with Same Old Song and Dance. It's not even them playing lead. If you want to see why, go to YouTube and watch old Aerosmith videos of them trying to play these songs. It'll click. I recommend Train Kept a Rollin' from the Midnight Special. It's truly terrible. That is a very, very bad thing. That's right. For the first time in the history of this podcast, we've got a three-part episode. That's just how bad this band is. You're welcome for part one. You're welcome for part two. When you do share part two on social media, go ahead and make sure to let everyone know you didn't even think part one could be beat, but we totally blew your fucking mind. And I did want to cut this episode right there where we were talking about that old midnight special footage because y'all really should go watch it if you haven't seen it. This is the band everyone insists was once a good band. It is a good thing their awfulness was documented with modern technology or even more dumbasses would believe and repeat that nonsense. We did not put any commercial breaks in this one just to show you we care, but please do head to shop.yfbspod.com if you need a gift for yourself or any music lovers or music haters in your life. And if you just want to show your appreciation for the show, we do have a little tip jar in the web store. If anyone out there is bored and you feel like doing some cartoon work, that segment where we're talking about how much jewelry Steven Tyler, the red-nosed reindeer, wears, I'm pretty sure that'd make a pretty hilarious cartoon. If anyone hasn't seen it yet, a fan named Jasmine Pilkington animated a little clip from our Metallica episode which we threw up on our YouTube channel a little while back. And of course, we have not even talked about 90s Aerosmith at all, so you know this grand finale is about to be a catastrophe.